Welcome back to the eighth part in this series and in this one we're going to carry on with the to-do list application that we've been building but in this one this is like the first video of the back end part of the application so in the previous few videos we've been building that angular front end to be able to uh, it gives the basic functionality of a to-do list application and what I want to do is build an API, a JSON API, that allows the uh, data that's entered from by the user or presented by default in our front-end application to be persisted. Now there are a couple of parts to that. The front-end Angular app will need to make a request to be able to get the current list of uh, elements in the to-do list but also it'll need some way of being able to update that list uh, whether whether that's adding an item or also potentially deleting an item from the to-do list depending on you know what input the user has given us to do that, that request based on. So let's start by just getting the Django application set up to uh, be able to start with that REST framework implementation. So the Django REST framework is what we're going to be using to build the uh, JSON responses to all of the requests from our Angular front end. Uh, and that means that we're going to need to install a another package. The first thing I want to do is I want to do uh, in my virtual environment, so you can see I've got my to-do virtual environment activated here. I'm just going to do pip install Django REST framework uh, with no spaces or dashes or anything and just hit enter on that and that will go and get the uh, framework that we're going to be using to build the API responses for our web application. Uh, I'm also going to do, uh, I'm actually going to add that to the requirements. So if I do uh, pip freeze, uh, and I can just grab for uh, rest, rest that probably do. Uh, so we've got Django REST framework and this is the current version that I'm using. So because we didn't specify a version when we pip installed it, it's just gonna get gotten the latest 3.6.3. .3. Now I'm going to put that in my uh, requirements file which is in requirements base.txt, so that when we uh, decide to install dependencies uh, based on this requirements file, then that will uh, be up to date and give us the dependencies that we, we actually need. So now that we've done that, to check it's working, we should be able to go into, uh, for example, the Django shell. So I'm gonna do Django admin shell, and I'm just gonna check that I can import it just to make sure that we have access to the framework we want to use. So I'm gonna try to do import rest framework, And so that succeeded. So that means we have access to our Django REST framework uh, to be able to start building out our API responses. Now that I've done that then, the next thing that I want to do is ex exit out of this shell because we don't need that. I'm, I was just trying to prove that we have access to the REST framework. I'm going to go back over to my URLs because what I want to try to do is define a uh, very basic URL and view so that we have some sort of response coming back and then later on we can actually flesh out that response with the data that we actually want to send to our front end but for now I just want to sort of get something up and running so that we can actually see uh, the effect of what we're doing. So I'm going to define another URL and this is going to be the one that generates all the responses uh, for our front end essentially. Uh, so I'm going to go and say, let's call the URL to do for slash API. And uh, we can always update this later, perhaps if we uh, want to change the architecture of how we're doing it or want to restructure, we can always change it later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'll put a slash there as well, I think. And the view that I want to render, uh, I haven't defined yet, but I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, to do view and I'm just going to do as view so that it's going to render properly hopefully. So that should be able to render our view and uh, because we haven't defined that yet I'm going to get rid of these comments because we don't really need them it's just taking up quite a bit of space and I want to import a view so from uh, let's say to do dot views uh, import to do view so I need to create that, so in to do, I want to create a new file, and I'm gonna call it views.py, and in here I'm gonna have class, and it's gonna be called to do, to do view, just like we defined in the URLs, and it's going to inherit from what's called an API view. 
Now, this is a REST framework class uh, in the Django REST framework that we've just uh, installed using pip, and it, that class itself inherits from a Django view. So this class is actually very similar to a standard Django view class. So with that, I'm just going to define a get method, and I'm going to say it takes self, it go, it's going to take request. Now this is slightly different, it's going to be a Django REST framework request object rather than the uh, standard Django HTTP request. Uh, so if you're wondering if there was a slight difference there, there is. Uh, I'm going to try that for now, and all I want to do is return uh, a response, and it's just going to be, uh, let's say, some sort of dictionary that proves it works. Uh, it worked. So we should see this as a JSON response, hopefully, uh, if everything works. So the things that I need to do, I still need to import the things, uh, the REST framework thing, so I need to import API view as well as response. Uh, so if I do from REST framework, dot response I can import response uh, so that's for that that one there that gives us our return value and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do from uh, again rest framework uh, dot views this time I'm going to import the view uh, API view so that should allow us uh, our very basic view uh, to work. So let's go over to our browser, sort of once we've run our development server, and see what we get at that URL. So I'm going to go to the URL that I defined, so for slash to do API. And so it complains to us that we don't have a template yet. What we need to do to fix this is we just go to settings and we need to put a Django REST framework, or in other words, REST underscore framework into our installed apps in the settings file uh, and that actually resolves this so if we refresh uh, we can now see that we have the standard Django REST framework uh, beautiful API response that we have so we've got uh, 200 response which means it was good, it was successful and you can see we've got the JSON response that we hard coded earlier on in our views.py so you can see that this view is working with our newly defined URL here. So we went to that URL and that that's why we got that in the URL there. Uh, and you can see that it's given us this JSON response. So in the next videos we're going to need to define a model to be able to store our to-do list elements in. And we're going to need to be able to serialize that model, what's called serializing it, basically converting it from a model to a JSON response in the browser. So that's where we're going to actually see the real power of the Django REST framework.